Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Cooking in Quarantine. I've taken a little break for a few days. Um, I was uh, with you last Thursday when we made that amazing uh, strawberry ginger Juneteenth cocktail. I had meant to um, be here with my uh, my Pizza Bianca Focaccia success that it finally took me to get to, I think, last Tuesday, um, and make it with sour dough starter, which I did, but it wasn't quite ready to bake on Saturday, um, so I did not do that. And then yesterday, uh, I don't know, I just wasn't motivated yesterday. I didn't quite have it together, but um, my father told me on Sunday night that the Kentucky Depot is not going to reopen. That's my favorite restaurant in my hometown. Gladys Rice was my first babysitter um, and next door neighbor when I was wee. And so it's like a part of my history. Um, and I'm really sad about that. So my favorite thing, I get the same thing every time I go to the depot. I have pinto beans, turnip greens, and her hoe cakes. So what I have here, it, I got in, it's funny, it's just a, a confluence of events. On Saturday, my neighbor, my downstairs neighbor called and said, we just bought all of these turnips from the farmer's market and we're not going to use the greens. We thought you being Southern, you might know how to use the greens. Indeed, I do. <laughs> so I have over here, I started with a smoked pork knuckle which I browned the skin up a little bit before I, and warmed it up before I added a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar to loosen up the fond and then put in my, uh, pr a big pile, probably close to two pounds of turnip greens, put in four cups of chicken stock and they've been cooking on low over here since about 1115. So they're probably getting close to done. Now, the recipe that I looked up for making pinto beans is about making them with dried beans. And then you get all this stuff, all the flavor together, and then you put a lot of water in and let them cook for three hours. Well, I'm using rinsed canned beans because who's got the time, right? So I have in here a bell pepper, an onion, a few strips of bacon that I had uh, first rendered off the bacon and poured some of the oil out that I'm going to use in my hoe cakes, or the fat out and put in my hoe cakes. Then uh, I've let this cook down with cumin, paprika, um, what I'll hang on, grandma's got to put her glasses on and consult and then I'll tell you what I'll have in here. Uh, chili powder, cumin, paprika, cayenne, garlic cloves, a bay leaf, an onion, and a red bell pepper. So now that that has all cooked together, anytime you put chili powder in something, you need to let that cook for a little while so that that, because it's really barky, right? And if you don't let it soften up, it's just going to feel like you're eating grit. So I've let that happen. And so now I think it's probably a perfect time to pop these beans in here so the beans can cut up some of that delicious flavor that's in here. Pardon me, I need to switch hands while I do this so that I can give these a little bit of a stir. Perfect. Oops, oops, oops. Things are flying over here. So now that I've got all this mixed together, um, I am going to take two seconds. I'm going to put a tiny bit of water in, not the several cups of cold for, just so that things don't stick. Excuse me, I forgot to turn the air conditioner off so while well, you don't have to listen to that terrible, terrible sound. There we go. So, fantastic. Everything is looking good. Let's take a peek at our turnip greens and see what they look are looking like. They are looking and smelling great. Can you see these over here? Beautiful. They still definitely can cook a little while longer. And I'm going to pop, crack that top a little bit so some more of that water cooks out. I'd like for most of it to cook out. I don't look great today because those of you who know it is like hell today in New York. It's one of those days that even if you constantly chase the shady side of the street, you still are going to get home and need to change your panties because they're going to be wet from all the sweat that's run down the center of your spine. So, good morning, Mr. Cooper. How are you? And Donnie and Sale and Denise and Allison. Hello, everybody. 
So what's next? Next is making hoe cakes. So people who are northerners, if you grew up in the northeast, you call them Johnny cakes and you probably eat them um, with applesauce and stuff like that. So um, we call them hoe cakes in the south because of the kind of grill you cook, uh, the, the kind of cast iron platter you cook, what's the word I'm looking for? Cast iron pan that you use to cook them on. I have, <laughs> it's so funny, I went shopping yesterday to get all the stuff that I needed to make today, except that one of the recipes, the recipe for the hoe cakes called for self-rising cornmeal. And I was at the grocery store and I'm standing there and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm thinking, you're not gonna have self-rising cornmeal up here. So I've made, so I thought to myself, I've got cornmeal at home, I'll just make my own self-rising, which for, your um, information and <laughs> uh, all you have to do is add a tablespoon, a teaspoon and a half of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of super fine salt to make any flour or anything self-rising. Now, when I got here, I realized that I, like literally five minutes ago, I went to pull everything out because I had everything else going and thought, okay, let's get everything ready to make this. And I realized I don't actually have cornmeal in the house. I have polenta. So, I'm gonna make some polenta cakes this morning. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. Sorry, there evidently New York is burning, which reminds me, somebody told my mother, sent a video to my mother saying, look at New York. Every building is completely covered over in wood and every window behind every piece of wood is shattered glass. Well, I walked from my apartment in Chelsea to the Empire State Building this morning. I walked back. I went to farther west Chelsea where I voted. And I'm here to tell you that that's a lie. So stop spreading the lies about New York being somehow out of control. Stop spreading lies about protesters being looters. They walk past my house every day. So stop telling lies. When you tell lies, people lose respect for you and you no longer have any ability to speak with authority because people will know you are a liar. So stop telling lies. If you want to talk trash about New York, you have to come through me. Done. Stop spreading lies. Thank you. I'm done now. So anyway, I have here a, a cup of self-rising flour and a cup of grits. Uh, or polenta, depending on how you, where you live, and that's maybe another thing. Polenta and grits are the same thing. It just depends on where your people come from as to what you call them. So here we go. I am going to, to make this a little easier, I'm going to crack my eggs into my three-quarter cup of buttermilk, and I'm going to mix that together before I start mixing more stuff together. So let me get a fork so I can blend these things together. And, here we go, just get those eggs mixed up in there. I think it just makes it easier. You don't have to worry about your, anything being lumpy or not well incorporated. So, there we go. So, I'm going to put this in here. There we go. Eggs and buttermilk. Check. Let's give that first a little stir and see where we are. There we go. Okay. And then I have, so three quarters cup of buttermilk, two eggs. I have here, it calls for either a quarter cup of vegetable oil or bacon fat. I didn't quite have enough bacon fat off of what I rendered this morning, so I topped it off with olive oil because, again, that's what I had. Hmm, here we go. That's handy. Let's get all of that goodness down in here. Perfect. And let's give that a little bit of a stir. And then the last bit calls for, um, what did it say? Uh, a, a quarter, hang on a minute, three quarters. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Called for a third cup. Did I do this right? No, that's two thirds of a cup. That is bad. That was almost a big snafu, wasn't it? See, that's what I did the other day when I was making the first round of bread I was trying to make. So, 
a third plus a tablespoon, so that's just barely over a third. And I'm gonna play fast and loose with this and say that that's okay. And then this is going to make a really loose batter. I've never made it before. You know me, I make things that I've never made before all the time. So, let's see how this comes up. Woo. So, like I said, there are things that I've never made before because, A, I live here in New York where why would I make French fries when there are French restaurants all over the place that have mastered the art of French fries? Why would I make steak tartare when it's so much nicer to eat it al fresco when someone brings it to you? Why would I make pinto beans, turnip greens, and hoe cakes when Gladys has been making them for me my whole life, right? So here we go, guys. Um, I'm going to take just a second to clear off a little spot here for myself so that when I start making the cakes, we I have room to make a mess. So here we go. And so what's the pan you need? Ah, oh, here we go. Here is the pan you need, right? Like a crepe pan. Um, this one was my great-great-grandmother's. It's old as Moses, so that makes it a wonderful thing. I'm going to move some stuff around here because it won't work alone on the front. Put those back there. Give them a little back heat. There we go. Nice and low. This little guy just needs to heat up. I'm gonna put just a little bit of grapeseed oil on it because it looks a little bit like it could use a little extra seasoning. Boom, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And then let's see. We just need to put a little butter now on this guy because that's what it asks for, this recipe asks for. So, like I said, I have used other people's recipes here, but I am, I always change them up a little bit, right? So that way I don't have to give credit where credit is due, right? Change it a little bit, it makes it your own, just a little bit. So here we go, waiting for the butter. And I'm going to say that this is the kind of day when you try something new, a glass of wine might not might serve you pretty well. So let's try this here. I realize I've got on tall shoes today, so I keep going out of the, out of the frame. Here we go. I see some rando things flopping around here, but here we go. Let's see. How high is my heat? Probably be a little higher. There we go. I put this in a bowl with a with a spout so that should make it easier and I'm gonna have this guy here it also says that I want to put them onto something that will absorb the fat so I'm gonna take my handy paper towel and I'm gonna come over here and get a plate with a lip here we go so do you think it's going to be like pancakes and the first one is going to be a loser? Or like the first kid, right? Like me? <laughs> All right, let's see what we have here. That looks to be about the right size. And beautiful. All right, let's see what happens. We're just going to stand here and watch. Or maybe I won't watch. A watched pot. Hello, everybody. So, this is... Babylon Storm Babel. Um, this is the best kitchen sink wine you can imagine. It is about half Syrah and then Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot Malbec, uh, and a little bit at the end of Pinotage. There we go. I knew I would come up with this. So, do we think hoe cakes are just like pancakes and I have to wait for them to bubble on the top? Because it looks like they're starting to bubble on the top. While I'm doing, while I'm waiting for that, I'm seeing that there's a lot of steam escaping from my beans. So I may have them turned up a little high. But those are looking nice and fine. 
mm, mm, mm. They smell delicious. And they're getting a little soupy. And here we go. This is looking good. It's coming up. I think I need to turn this pan because I think it's a little warmer on one side than the other. So there we go. That should be helpful. And we'll see. Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Of course, I'll have to be giving hoe cakes away all day long because I've got so darn much batter. So this is a wonderful wine. Anybody who wants any Babylon Storm wine, you can just email me or direct message me. We can arrange for it to come to your home. Don't tell anybody. It's an insider deal. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. It must be a fruit day today because that wine is full of fruit. Okay. It seems like we're getting it along. I don't want to quite flip it yet because I don't feel like that the the other side, like I said, one side seemed to be a little, okay, but it's moving nicely. It's not sticking. All right, do you think? What happens if I turn it over? Let me just see what it looks like. Oh, it looks great. Okay, flip it. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, it looks really good. I'm very excited. Okay, here, let me see. If you guys can see from over there that this looks really good for a first attempt, I'm very pleased, I have to say. And let's see if I turn I have a little jollop over here that's going to turn into a perfect little crouton -y piece of deliciousness, I'm sure. Okay. This is nice and thick. It's looking pretty. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Who knows? Who knows? I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Oh, baby, let's see what we're looking at here. That still needs to go a little bit more, I believe. Okay, just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm so excited. All right, let's see, how does that baby look? That looks pretty good. Um, I think maybe it might need to cook just a little bit more. You certainly don't want it to be mushy in the middle. We're getting there. We are almost there. And that's great. So I'm going to put this one here since it's my first one. And I'm just going to put a little more butter. And I'm going to make two smaller ones and see if size makes them look better or worse or what the deal is. So here's some more butter right in the middle. And then let's do two small ones if I can. Oh, this self-resin is making everything puff up really nicely here in the bowl, even. Okay, so I've got two smalls here. Okay, hello. Mess, mess, mess. All right, so, you know, they say usually this is the first pancake is a mess, so I'm going to test this and see if they are better the second time around. Oh, yeah, how pretty. Come on, babies. I need for you. Let's just pull this around just a little bit more so I can get this right over there. That seems good. And it's starting to bubble up through the middle or around the edges, not yet in the middle. So I'm going to turn this heat up ever so slightly because I don't think it's quite as warm around the edges as I want it to be. Um, I probably should have put this on the, on the fire about 10 minutes before I even turned the camera on so that it would be super heated all the way across, all the way through. And here we go. Do you think maybe that's about to get there? Yeah, around the edges. Isn't that funny? But I'm going to have the same kind of issue with the last one, I'm afraid. So let's just give it a... Mm, nope, those aren't those ready yet? Yep, those have got a turn. Okay, and there we go. I've got, a, I've got an undercooked edge and an overcooked edge. But anyway, there we go. I'm learning. Maybe I need a bigger pan. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Let's have a taste of this first one and see if you can put grits in cornbread.
Yes, you can. Mm mm mm. Muy bien. Mm. Petit beurre. Mm. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I would say that this has been a successful cooking in quarantine because I have figured out how to make a couple of things. Now, that said, I would like these better if I had really coarse cornmeal in here instead of the finer um, uh, quality of the polenta. But I like it, guys. And I think it's going to be all really wonderful once we get everything pulled together. I could probably do a little better on my corn cakes, but it's just me, at least for right now. So, guys, thank you so much for being here with me. And I would say that the sad thing here is this is not going to be the first of our favorite restaurants that we're going to find out that isn't reopening. Um, luckily, this one is not about money so much as it is that after being closed for four months, maybe the person has said it's time to retire, <laughs> which is indeed the case. So find something you love, cook something you love, hug somebody you love, have a day full of love, guys. So thank you all for being here, as always. I have no idea what we're going to do tomorrow because I'll have all of this food to eat unless I can manage to give it away, um, which I probably can get a few bowls away. <coughs> Pardon me. So, guys, thank you so much. You know the drill. Love yourselves. Love your fellow man. Tell the truth. Don't spread lies. Go vote. Ciao, everybody.